So I want you to understand that. You remember a few years ago we had something called the SARS virus? And people all over the world were dying, I think. Right? This is what a simple thing like a mosquito, you know, dengue. Could you imagine the Spanish bringing all these diseases and there's nothing like clinics or hospitals and the immunity systems of these Indians suddenly no resistance to these foreign influences, right? So I want you to understand the way in which this population declined. It was a physical decline, but it was also a decline contributing to, as a result of what they had brought in, right? So there's also the word pathogen. that were introduced, right? Be it viruses, be it a fungal disease, be it a tick, be it a, a pest, right? You see things like rats and cockroaches and things? All these things live on ships and when they come into the Caribbean, the rat and cockroach are going to stay there on their ship to go back to Spain, you know? They come into the Caribbean and they stay there and they multiply it, right? And they come in with diseases. So I want you to understand that these pathogens that were introduced into the Caribbean created ecological and environmental changes that affected the livestock. Livestock meaning the animals that these Indians raised and also the plants and foods that they ate and grew. Right? So I want you to understand, yes the horses trampled some, but also it was an invisible sort of thing that they didn't understand. Right? Any other reasons? So this contributed to starvation. Besides working long hours on the estate, their crops and their animals started to be destroyed, right? Any other reasons you believe that contributed to a decline of the indigenous people? Warfare. Warfare. Could you tell me what you mean by warfare? What, 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 how did that contribute to decline? Why, why was warfare so important? And why was it a disadvantage amongst the Indians? Superior weapons. What were some of these weapons? You have the Yamis, spears. At times you have artillery. As against one another. Right? So all these things. And heavy armor as well. Heavy armor to protect them from these things, right? So the armor, the guns, the spears. Lances and things like gunpowder, thing you didn't know about. Cannon, completely new to these indigenous people, right? Swords, right, would easily kill these indigenous people. So I want you to understand the advantage of warfare, the advantage of weaponry contributed to a rapid decline amongst these people, right? Now, I also want you to bear in mind too that these people simply lost the will to live. They felt their gods had failed them. You all know, you all know about the common term depression. You know when somebody is depressed, they don't want to eat, they cannot sleep good, right? And they're losing weight, all these things, or they're gaining weight, right? All these things contributed to the destruction of a great civilization, the mind civilization. It contributed to the decline of the Tainos and Kalinagos. They lost the will to live. They were under, under these masters, cruel Spanish masters, and they lost that will to live. Right, I was telling you all just now about smallpox. The island of Hispaniola had an outbreak of measles and smallpox in 1507 and 1570. I just told you all about Cuba. Island of Hispaniola, a measles and smallpox outbreak in 1507 and 1517. Many of these native Indians poisoned themselves using cassava juice. Many of these, this is one way of committing suicide. In Cuba and Hispaniola, many of these native Indians poison themselves using cassava juice. And
Many of these Scottish people would drop babies from hills, drown them in the rivers, out of sheer leisure, amusement, right? Very, very cruel. <coughs> And even the first colonists, even the first colonists treated these Indians bad. Even these first colonists treated the Indians bad. In Columbus' first trip, in Columbus's first trip, he took nine Tainos with him back to Spain. Now, this is something terrifying for these Tainos, eh? Columbus took back nine Tainos to show the king and the queen and other Spanish people that he had found a new civilization, that he had found more people on the next side of the world. So he, this by itself shows you they lacked any sort of concern and care for these indigenous people. They use the bitter cassava. They squeeze it out, the juice from that bitter cassava, and they drink it in, in an act of rebellion, act of protest, and they would die. Of course, it wasn't an immediate death. Eh? It was just poisoning your sister, and after a few days, you die. But as I was telling you earlier, that by itself, the act of poisoning themselves, the act of killing their baby, showed how much they, they didn't want to suffer in the Spanish. They didn't want their children to suffer. Have in the future under the Spanish people, right? Remember I told you in an earlier lecture, many of these caciques and chiefs rather be killed and go to hell rather than go to heaven where the Spanish rule because they had this deep animosity for the Spanish, this deep hatred when they saw the Spanish had destroyed their lives and their families. I also want you to remember too that many of these women were raped by the Spanish men. Eh? Many of these women were raped by the Spanish men amongst the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Incas, and the men were powerless to do anything. It happened during slavery and indentureship in the Caribbean, and it happened since then amongst the Spanish. Right? So I don't want you to I want you to understand what contributed to the breakdown of family life. What contributed to the spread of these diseases, sexual diseases being spread? What contributed to the deep hatred against the Spanish? And what contributed to these indigenous women who wanted to kill themselves and their babies, right? Especially if they know that their babies are going to come out half Spanish, right? They don't want that. So I want you to understand all these things contributed to a breakdown in the indigenous population, a decline, a hatred for these people who had come into their lives and destroyed their lives, destroyed their gods, destroyed their homes, right? And continue to do so. Now, when Columbus established his settlements, his first voyage, second voyage, third voyage, fourth voyages, these Spanish people, the governors and things, did not listen to the indigenous people, their plight, their problems. They had them enslaved, right? So I want you to understand that a lot of times people feel Christopher Columbus was this great discoverer and this great navigator. But Christopher Columbus began the destruction, the decimation that other Spanish people and other Europeans continued, right? He began that. If he had started off cordial relations, he might have set the pace for better treatment, better relationship between the indigenous people and the Europeans. But he started off on the wrong foot and his men also started off on the wrong foot too. Columbus, on his return to the Caribbean in 1493, Columbus, on his return to the Caribbean in 1493, he found that the settlement he had established, and that settlement is Villa de la Navidad. The fourth word up here. The Villa de la Navidad had been destroyed. He established the Villa de la Navidad that lived up there on the screen. He established it on his first voyage. When he returned in 1493, he found that this settlement in Hispaniola had been destroyed by the indigenous people. And the reason that this settlement was destroyed 
was simply because the Spanish men, the Spanish men took Taino women and made the men angry. One of the major reasons that historians have been arguing was this settlement, Villa de la Navidad, right? The spelling of that is on the screen, was destroyed because Columbus's men took Taino women, right, as wives, as slaves, and this got the Arawak men, Taino men angry, and they retaliated. Some of the Kalinagos, some of the Kalinagos in Hispaniola, other islands, rebelled against what Columbus was doing. Some of the Kalinagos in Hispaniola, in particular, rebelled. And as a result, Columbus sent them back to Spain as slaves. As a form of punishment, Columbus sent some of these rebellious Kalinagos back to Spain, and Queen Isabella was very disappointed and displeased what he did. Queen Isabella was very disappointed and displeased in what he did. 